And uh, when I speak to um, English teachers and teachers um, who are seeing me in my English lens, they're very forgiving of my um, digital clunkiness. And when I speak to teachers who, or people involved with the digital uh, and media, they're somewhat surprised at my clunkiness. But I figure I'm probably representative of lots of people. So bear with me, and I hope it's not too clunky. When I returned to work uh, after the long summer holidays, I was very excited to find in my pigeonhole a letter, a real letter. Not, not um, a flyer, not a circular, something real and personal and addressed to me. Me, by name. It's got a stamp. It's got a postmark. And it had an address on the back. And when I opened it, it was a card from my friend Jeanette in New York. And as it said, you could see what I pulled out was something which said, illuminatingly, this is not a text. <laughs> So leaving aside the novelty, um, as I said, it, it was this message, but Jeanette had written, that's a matter for debate. Of course, it's not an SMS, um, which is what we think of as text, but it's a measure of how deeply embedded we are in digital technologies and culture. But it took a moment for me to recognise also the allusion to earlier versions um, about not text, um, raging debates about what constitutes a text. There was a um, a, a famous furore some years ago about is the tissue box a text, you know? Um, and we can go further, further, further back to that of all sorts of theorists. Um, I tried to put an image up of Magritte's um, painting, This Is Not a Pipe, um, but it was copyright, so I, I left it alone. Um, but so what we're seeing is what are texts um, and a shift um, between um, talking about literature to talking about texts. Um, in terms of thinking about what kind of things get set, what kind of books, what kind of texts get set um, on our curriculum. Durant and Green wrote about, um, you probably know Green's 3D model. So when they were describing this, um, Durant and Green talked about what, what we were seeing was a broad-based shift from print to digital electronics as the organising context for literate textual practice and for learning and teaching. Although this doesn't mean the eclipse of print culture as we know it, print technologies and cultures, it does mean we need to employ a rather different, more flexible and comprehensive view of literacy, schooling and technological practice, one which is likely to be beneficial in moving us and our children into the new millennium. This is a 2000 um, summary of it. Um, and what this involves, he says, is thinking through and towards a sea change uh, in literacy and education. So turning now to uh, the national curriculum, and I know everyone, each state has its iteration, but this is, this is um, what we're all doing. Uh, so in that strand of text, texts are described as being written, spoken, visual, multimodal, in print or digital um, or online forms. That multimodal texts combine language with other means of communication, um, such as visual images, soundtracks, spoken words. Uh, texts provide important opportunities for learning about aspects of human experience and about aesthetic value. So the first part of that about mode, really, about not just words but other kinds of dimensions, other kind of forms of meaning making too, and the second part of that about thinking, well, why have we got text in the curriculum? You know, is it communication? Is it more than communication? And the importance of aspect of human experience and aesthetic value, which for me chime very much in with um, what we might call living the purposes of English, that, but particularly the kind of literary dimension um, of English. Literature itself is described similarly um, in quite wide terms. So it's texts from across a range of historical and cultural contexts that are valued for their form and style and are recognised as having enduring or artistic value. While the nature of what constitutes literary text is dynamic and evolving, uh, and so on. Uh, you can read the rest of that for yourself. So I think what we're seeing in the curriculum then is this is our current um, status quo, I suppose, in terms of, of bringing together uh, familiar forms of text, familiar forms of uh, what, what constitutes language and literature in English uh, and how we need to think about that now. Each state um, has um, slightly differing versions of this. I'm from Victoria. Um, I've spent recently just come back from seven years in Queensland, two quite different cultures, um, 
as, as I think Jackie's uh, and others' presentation yesterday um, reminds us, um, the nature of what constitutes English is subject to change. In Australia, if you think about the way Australia developed as a series of states rather than a federation, each state has its own particular kind of culture of how it sees English. So the balance between the different elements of English is slightly different. Uh, and and the, the national curriculum is an attempt to um, encompass all of those. And I think, again, all of us in different states kind of wrestle a bit with how to align how we do it with the bigger picture, while all the time also wrestling with those questions of how to do, how to hold on to what we value and have done always, but how to do it in the digital, in a context of a digital age. That organising context for literate textual practice and for learning and teaching.